to Jacksonville and TIAA Bank Field. A few minutes prior to us coming on air, this crowd was jolted into action with the introduction of these Jaguars. They're set for football as the Jags are ready to match up with the Indianapolis Colts. the punter Rigoberto Sanchez on to get us started and off we go from Jacksonville Jamal Agnew now to return it and able to take it past the 25 and up to the 28 yard line so here's the first drive now for the Jags they're led by the number one overall pick in the 2021 draft, Trevor Lawrence. The word is potential, potential, potential. Think about this guy from the time he was in high school, all the top prospects going to college, coming out of college, mentioned as a generational type quarterback. He looks the part. Tall, big arm, surveys the field, and can take off and run when under duress. Lawrence's throw into the hands of the receiver, Chanel. And they'll wind up getting this to the 37, gain of nine. A good safe pass there right off the bat. That's almost a rhythm play. That's what we like to call it. Get them into rhythm early, something safe, something they're confident about, something they feel good. And once that's completed, then you just keep moving from there because the confidence elevates. And they'll run it. This is James Robinson. On first and ten, it's Lawrence. This one complete to Christian Kirk. And he's brought down. Now from Colts territory, here's a first and 10 at the 43. Now Lawrence to throw. Quick slant caught by Kirk. And he's going to get this one down to the edge of the red zone. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. Throw left side, complete to Ingram. They'll contain him to just four, second down. I don't think it's a surprise they're throwing the football early. We expected that. They told us they were going to come out firing, but four for four on the opening drive. They like that. <laughs> they don't just like it. They love it because now everyone gets locked in. Your confidence jumps up. Everyone's easy about what they're doing out there. And by the way, they're looking at the sideline thinking to themselves and expressing, let's keep throwing it. We're doing pretty well. And on the left sideline, he caught it, but out of bounds, according to the headlinesman. Incomplete, so the ball a little late getting there, and it's third down. It's been a good opening drive offensively thus far, but you know they don't want to waste it and settle for a field goal attempt after that incompletion. So this is a big play coming up here on third down. So after the second down incompletion, they'll come up now against a third and six. Looking to throw, Lawrence. He'll get that underneath ETN. And the Jags are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. A terrific opening drive has them knocking on the door, first and goal. Again, it's Lawrence. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. That's good for a gain of six, second and goal. And the pocket's been protected pretty good here so far on the opening drive. We always talk about confidence in runners and catchers and quarterbacks. How about the protection detail? They're not allowing anyone near the guy throwing the football. Second and goal from inside the five. Robinson. And he gets halfway home from the four down to the two-yard line. They'll try and run. This is Robinson. And he'll take this one in for a Jags touchdown. James Robinson taking it in from two yards out. And the Jaguars drive right down the field and score on the opening drive. So it was the passing game that got him down here, but closer to the goal line, it's the running game that gets him home. Certainly appears that they lulled the defense into thinking that the passing game was going to be it the entire drive. Nice change up there going to the running game to get him over the goal line. Now they'll line up to kick the extra point. 
And this is up and good. The score now 7-0 Jaguars. A 10-play drive that time. And it's culminated by a two-yard touchdown run. After the touchdown, Cook now to kick this one away. The drive will start at the 25-yard line here as Rodgers will not return it. So now the Colts will get their first opportunity with a football. They'll be led out by the number one overall pick of the 2008 draft, the man they call Matty Ice, quarterback Matt Ryan. And I think if there's one quarterback in the league who sometimes gets taken for granted, to me it's Matt Ryan because I think throughout his career, he's been consistently excellent. Frequent member of the 4,000-yard club, savvy veteran, knows how to throw the deep ball and create big plays, and yes, he will beat you from the pocket. He'll have a first down past the 40 and all the way up to the 45-yard line. Come on, let's go. The big play to start him out has him at the 45 already. And he got blown up. Losing yardage on the play back at the 44. Looking at a second and 11 now after the loss. Now Ryan. They'll set up the screen to Taylor. And he'll get nothing there. Stopped right at the line as that will wind us down to the end of this first quarter play. And now we'll get a timeout. Looks like we've got a Jaguar in some discomfort down there on the field. Here's Ryan to throw. He finds his man complete. That's Pierce. And he is going to have a Colts first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. So in Jacksonville territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 45-yard line. On the handoff, Taylor. And to the 36-yard line, taken down there after getting eight yards. Eight yards the tally on that first down run. Here's second and two. Running left, Taylor. Nothing doing. Barely able to muster a yard to hit the 35. On third and one, Ryan. And he picks up the first before he's taken down at the 29. And that one was a lot of fun right there because that was the game within the game. Third and short, blitz was on. What's the key for the quarterback? Get out of your hands in a hurry. And that was a quick little completion. Got the job done for a first down. First and 10, Taylor now. A short gain here, maybe a yard to the 29. No doubt about it, a really nice job there by the defense, not allowing him to get to the perimeter. But that means your defensive ends, your outside linebackers, the guys that you pay big money to to sack the quarterback, they also have to have interest in the running game as well. And they did a nice job there of holding the point of attack and not giving ground. On second and nine, Ryan over the middle complete. That's Pierce. Stopped at the 24-yard line after a gain of five. This offense has converted two third downs on this drive already. This is third and four. To throw is Ryan. And that will be incomplete. Tight defense there on third down, but what a product of good coaching and even better execution because he realized he's in field goal range. No sense forcing anything and he made sure he didn't. Rodrigo Blankenship for the Colts field goal. And this one, a 41-yard attempt. Blankenship's kick is good. And they are on the board, but still trailing. It's seven to three. So from an offensive perspective, at least able to get on the board here right in front of the two-minute warning. Yeah, now it's time to talk about complimentary football, isn't it? Because if the defense can force a three and out, there could be enough time on the clock that they can get the ball back for their offensive guys maybe put some more points on the board before the half. Out 
destroys the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. And no return here for Agnew, so they'll bring it out, start the drive at the 25. So time to see Jacksonville again on offense for the second time here in this game. They had the touchdown on the opening drive of the ball game. It was countered by just a field goal. So, hey, if your guys can do that for four quarters, you're in good shape. Yeah, it is a team game, so that's just good complimentary football. But, you know, I know I'm no brainiac, but you trade sixes for threes, things are going to work out in your favor. Now a handoff to start it out. Robinson, and he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. Certainly a nice job there by the defense rallying to the football and getting him on the ground. But I think the play gets made by the defensive front because if they can't get upfield, their job is to go ahead and get low, almost get into a ball sometimes, stack things up, and make it difficult for the runner to find a hole. From the 27, Lawrence. And his throw is going to be incomplete. A lot of times it's that first read that you have. Maybe you get it in pre-snap and he locked in on his target, but he was covered quite well and that one's incomplete. So the failure to connect on second down, that leaves him staring up here at a third and eight. Here's Lawrence. They'll complete this to Ingram is tight end. And this effort will not get it done. He stopped well short of the first down at the 29. On fourth down, on is Logan Cook to punt. Back deep for the Colts, Naheem Hines. So a change of possession here on the punt. And the Colts will go on offense here, first and 10. Second drive coming up here for the Indianapolis Colts. And last time able to get three. It's not what they wanted. They wanted six, but they got at least something. They mustered something out of the drive. They'll take it. Just, I, I like the way you've described it. Not ideal, but they'll take it. Anything to put some points on the board. But this time on offense, they don't even want to see the field goal kicker trot on the field. <laughs> they want that ball in the end zone. Yeah, they'll be going for six. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. Time of factor as Ryan will hustle him to the line. Now Ryan on second down. Got a man complete, it's Taylor. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. This one was all about clearing space for this play to work because he's gonna leak out of the backfield to his right and then angle his way up the field and a really pretty throw to put it on him and create the big play downfield. Now Ryan on first down. He finds his man complete. It's Pierce. The Colts going to use the first of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 55 seconds to go until halftime. Second and four. Throw again. He finds his man complete. It's Pierce. Now the Colts going to burn the second of their timeouts as the clock shows 50 seconds to play here in half number one. They had to settle for three last drive, hoping the second go around ends in six. In good position, first and ten. He'll drop this down to Taylor. So they'll get nothing out of that play. And that'll make it second and ten. Well, that was a simple throw and catch, but even with that completion, zero yards gained. So they're behind schedule on down and distance. I think they were hoping to get it to him. He could make a man or two miss, but that window closed quickly. Here's second and ten. Now it's Ryan. And that is incomplete. 16 seconds now on the clock. To this point, I've been impressed with the work defensively. They have not allowed a lot of receivers to run free. And there's another example, another incompletion. They had the incomplete pass on second down. Now they need a big play here, third and 10. From the gun, it's Ryan. Open man is Taylor, he's got it. And he gets it inside the 10 to the nine. Now a timeout signaled for, and they'll get it with 10 seconds to go before halftime. So it's first and goal and a great opportunity to get that lead back before the break. Throwing 
Young again. Ryan. Incomplete. And we're down to eight seconds now. My first thought is surprise because that's one of the better tight ends around, and I've seen him pull in balls like this before. But how about a little credit to the defense forcing that incompletion? Another shot from the nine on second and goal. Now Ryan. Toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. That was a touchdown if he could have hung on. Instead, it was a well-timed collision to jar that one free. So three seconds here remain in the half. On is the field goal unit to see about getting three points. From the right hash here, should be an easy one. Blankenship's kick is good. And that will do it for this first half. So we hit the halftime break here in Jacksonville with the Jags on top. As we now go downstate to Orlando and check in with Jonathan Coachman with our EA Sports Halftime Report. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. Welcome, everybody, to our abbreviated version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. Okay, right, Brandon, thanks very much. And welcome in, everyone, to this slimmed-down version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. This one has the look of a game that could very well go down to the wire. Just one point separating these two clubs at the break. But they're ready for the second half, and we are too. As we'll kick it right back out to Brandon and Charles. The Colts getting the football first, and they trail here as we are back underway in quarter number three. Rodgers on the return. And he'll go down as this drive. Because is it going to win the game? No, but you have to do something to bring some life to your sideline. A carry by Taylor to start the drive. Taylor's got the first down and more. Oh, a solid stiff arm in some open field. And finally, he goes out of bounds right at the 35-yard line. 49 yards rushing for him now, and he's carried the ball just five times. Sometimes it's hard to believe, but... There are times this game is about patience, isn't it? Has had the game he expected, but that run there, that may get him going. I was just going to say, maybe that gives him a little juice because you're right, he struggled, especially in that first half. Yeah, and I know the great ones always think to themselves, just hang in there. I'm just one big carry away from busting this open. That's a good start for him. So that changes things a bit. Here's a first and 10 all the way down at the 35. Ryan. Well, that one drops down incomplete. Time contact and another incomplete pass. Again on second and 10, it's Ryan. He finds his man complete. That's Pierce. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Jaguars' 19. They couldn't ask for much more to this point in the second half. A gorgeous day, one-score game, first and 10 here. Inside the red zone here. And he's going to go down. Back at the 27-yard line, he's sacked. Another try after the first down sack. Ryan, that's complete to his running back, Taylor. And just three yards on the catch there. He couldn't get away. And it's going to be third down and a ways to go here. Third and 14. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They've become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers' tight ends because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays from offense. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. He'll find his man. That's Taylor again. And he's going to lose yards. They take him down at the 26. It'll be a loss of two, maybe three on the play. And that's going to bring up a fourth down. No surprise they decided to throw on third down. A little bit of a surprise that they completed the pass and lost yardage on the play. So now here comes the field goal team for the third time today. From the left hash mark, this a 43-yard attempt. 
Blankenship's kick is good. And they jump back in front here. It's 9-7. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. Now Jamal Agnew from his end zone. And ultimately, he stopped right where he would have been if he had simply gone down to a knee at the 25. Here comes the Jags offense now. Time for their first possession of half number two. And they find themselves down on the scoreboard following the field goal a moment ago. And I think even though they trail in the game now, I would consider that a win for their defense. And that's probably what they're telling the offense when they get to the bench. Hey, the onus is on you guys now. Get back out there and get us the lead back. And from the 25, they work this to the 29, a gain of four. I feel like I could see what he was thinking on that carry. He wanted to follow that big tackle through the hole. Ended up only getting four yards on the carry. I think he had designs on that one being bigger. Lawrence running right on the option. And the second wave of tacklers is going to get him as they stop him behind the line. On third down, Lawrence. And this is going to be incomplete. We're into the second half now. This is an offense that continues to struggle to sustain a drive. Looks like they're just totally out of sync, whether they're running the ball, passing the ball like we saw there. I don't know. The rhythm seems off. Here's Logan Cook now as he'll kick it away for the second time. His first punt, 45 yards. This looks good as well. So possession goes over here on the punt. And that will come the offense as they take over. And now Indianapolis set to take the field. Their defense has done the job. Now it's the offense's turn as they've got it first and 10. They'll run with Taylor to begin the drive. And he'll push his way forward to about the 32. Here's Ryan. He'll find Paris Campbell. That's complete. And he'll be stopped right at midfield. From midfield now, here's Ryan. Give him a gain of five on the completion, and it'll be second down. All defenses worry that whenever anyone catches the ball and has a head of steam come out of the backfield, it could turn into a big play with missed tackles or he runs through people. But they were right there waiting, and they stopped him for a minimal gain. And they're not going to get to the line to run another play. So we will switch ends as the third quarter has come to a close. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports. Five yards remain on second down. Out of the gun, it's Ryan. Oh, he's unable to hold on to that defensively. A potential game changer, but it falls incomplete. I think he's taking an awful chance with the football right there. You've got a lead, you've got to protect it, and he's taking chances putting it out there in a little bit of jeopardy. Especially in a spot like this, fourth quarter, as you said, trying to cling to that advantage. Yeah, that one probably should have been picked up. Again, Ryan. He gets this into the hands of Taylor. And he'll cross over out of bounds right at the 25. And that pickup of a first down, that's going to leave a mark because they really needed to stop them there, didn't they? Well, so frustrating. Defensively, you're a play away from getting that football back here down late. Tough. Now they've got to find a way to create a turnover or takeaway. Otherwise, this one will probably get away from them. On first down, Ryan. He lost nine there. That's really going to set him back for second down. They go play action now. Ryan. To the sideline, and it's caught. But, boy, he's out of bounds. The Colts on third down. They've converted four times out of six. Not bad. This will be third and 19. Ryan. Catch made here by Campbell. And he'll be out of bounds as he gets it down to the 30 there. 
They get only four that time as that leads us to a fourth down. They got the completion, but they didn't get the first down. So you got to think if you're on the defensive side of the ball, you're pretty happy with what you just accomplished there. Yeah, guy, like you said, got him out of bounds, stopped the clock, kept him short of the marker. So now one of the biggest kicks of the night is forthcoming. It'll come from the right hash. It's a 47-yard attempt. Blankenship's kick is good. And that will push the lead up to 12-7. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. This taken in at the goal line. And he'll get it up just past the 20 as his guys will go to work at the 21-yard line. As they head to the field now with the game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do... Well, that's into a sea of bodies, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Stephon Gilmore. And he will bring it back. An interception return for a Colts TD. That's the story of the game. They've been suffocating all game long on defense. They were suffocating there again in a big way. And they've done it not just by out-athleting them, which is often the case, but by being able to adjust to anything they tried to throw at them and beating them into the punch each and every time. This was a defense that was well prepared. Extra point attempt here still to come. This one gives his guys a 12-point lead. So the defense creating some points, not only getting the interception, but then returning it to the end zone for the pick six. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six, and now the kick is away. Taken at the goal line. And makes it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. Throwing after the interception. Lawrence finds his tight end, Ingram. Three yards the gain there, second down. Here's Lawrence to throw. And it's incomplete. From the snap, he certainly looked like he knew where he wanted to go with the ball, but surprise, that guy was covered. So that took his attention elsewhere to no avail. Now Lawrence. It's going to be caught. It's Chennault. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. Throwing again here. It's Lawrence. Throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. 53 is the mark. 53. Check 53. Lawrence. Flush to his right. He'll get this one down near the 20-yard line, just shy of the 20. Throwing now, Lawrence on first down. Quick hitter here, it's complete. They'll contain him to just four, second down. Ran a perfect defense in this situation. Would have meant that there was an incompletion that would have picked it off. Okay, so they gave up the completion. But I really enjoyed watching how the defense stayed in sync. Stayed in great communication. And as he dragged across each zone, you see him pointing, communicating. There he is. And they passed him off to each defender. Ended up making a nice play, even though it was complete. Now a second down throw for the end zone, but it's incomplete. We've got to give out a little applause on that play. It has to go to the defense. More good work by them. They've taken away the passing lanes all game long, and you can see the frustration that it's causing because he just about threw that one into the first row. Seventh play of the drive upcoming here on third and six. On third down, it's Robinson. And he's going to have a first down on a gain of about 10, and that'll take us to the two-minute warning. So it's Jaguar football here as we welcome you back. They've got it first and goal as they look to punch in a late score. Got his man complete over the middle. That's Jones. And they'll get this from the eight to the five. Pick up a three. Second down and goal. Lawrence. And this is caught now for a touchdown. So hold everything here. This one's not over yet. 
I'm not sure win-win is the proper term here, but it certainly felt like it. They got the touchdown they needed, but if I'm on the defensive side of the ball, okay, you got the touchdown, but it sure took you a long time. Yeah, because offensively there, you're probably hoping for a one-to-five play drive. That one ate up a little more time than they were hoping. You're exactly right, and if you have that one-to-five play drive, you actually build up momentum and even more hope when they had to slog their way downfield. They got the touchdown, but it's almost like, ah, yeah. yeah, you know. It doesn't you got, feel right. Exactly. And this is back to a five-point game. So that one a pretty time-consuming 10-play drive. And it culminates in a Jags touchdown. After the touchdown, Cook now to kick this one away. And here's Rodgers to return. And he won't quite make it to the 25. And this game not quite over yet. And we'll likely see them take all three timeouts defensively, so they can't just kneel this one out. They're going to have to try to run a few plays. You're exactly right. They've got to get a first down and make them use up all their timeouts in order to feel like they have this one in hand. And he'll be brought down on the 30-yard line after a gain of six. They run once more with Taylor. Now the Jags will use the second of their timeouts. And the Jags with five in the secondary now on third down. Throwing now is Ryan. Oh, the ball comes out on the hit, but they'll say it's incomplete. It certainly didn't appear that that's where he wanted to go with the ball initially, so he tried to get something out of it by dumping it off to his running back unsuccessfully. Now here's Rigoberto Sanchez as he's on a punt for the first time this afternoon. Fair catch signal for and taken just shy of the 30-yard line. A minute 11 to go. How will this thing pan out? We'll watch as they come up on first down. He's back to throw. Into the hands of Ingram. Uh, he's got this almost to the 40 before going out. They got exactly what they wanted there. Out route, catch, get out of bounds, stop the clock. And I have to criticize defense here because you know the situation. You want to keep them in bounds and have the clock run. So I'm sitting on the outside portion of the field and not letting them throw an out route. Throw anything inside and I'll make the tackle. An out route? That, that's not the way you're supposed to play it. This is Robinson. They'll contain him to just four. Second down. Back to throw. Able to find Jones. Brandon's okay with what they're doing right now. Still able to work the middle of the field, but you know sooner or later, they're going to have to stop the clock. Rolling. The Jaguars now will use the last of their timeouts as the clock will stop with an even 20 seconds left to go. They'll look to throw. Looking downfield for Jones. And it'll be incomplete. Good job staying with him defensively. And it'll bring up second down. These are the spots, this stage of the game, where it pays to have speed on the perimeter, doesn't it? It certainly does. And in the second quarter, he may very well have run by him. But in this situation, I know as a defender, I'm loosening up a couple of extra steps that allowed him to run with him stride for stride. He'll look to throw. Oh, he's going to let this go for the end zone. And that will be incomplete. Trying to dial up the long way way out there, but it'll be third down. So he's unable to complete it there, and just not the game that you would expect from him. He's been off the mark really start to finish. Yeah, it makes you wonder what exactly is going on. Is he a little bit dinged up here, or is it just off just by a bit? Maybe he can get it back in this situation. He'll need to. Back to throw. And that will be incomplete. Four ticks left here on the clock. Down to their last chance now. This is going to have to be a heat for the end zone and just hope for a miracle. And I don't sit back with everyone back defending. I've got to have somebody rushing the quarterback. Don't make it easy for him to set up and throw the ball all the way downfield. And down by five. They've got to go for it here on fourth down. A final shot now for Lawrence. A desperation heat for the end zone. And this is incomplete. So no miracles here on the final play. 
And this ball game is over. So this one winds up an Indianapolis victory. And I tell you, these division games never for the faint of heart, but they come through with a tight victory here on the road. And you find yourself working harder in a game like this too, don't you? Yeah, because pop, you got to stay sweat. with it, right? You got to stay with it. You got to stay locked in. It's our type of a game. And you just mentioned it. Division game on the road, tight, and they find a way to win it. Way to hunker down, as my old coach used to say, and find your way through. my partner, Charles Davis, and the best darn crew in the industry. I'm Brandon Gaunt. This has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. With that, we sign off from Jacksonville. I let them talk, yeah, I know they want to hate me. They cry me off because I'm doing things greatly. I let them watch because they'll never outpace me. I'm doing things they never will because I've been fighting my own life for all this and I would die for all this. So they put me in the ground, man, I'ma try for all this. I'ma ride for all this and I would die for all this. Till my enemies are watching on the side while I'm with. With the telling me, second of tragedy, 